In the most dignified records of human history, the year 1969 stands as a legacy of audacious endeavor and boundless curiosity. It was the year when the Apollo mission dared to breach the earthly confines and set its sights on an otherworldly destination, the moon. Guided by the visionary dreams of exploration, Neil Armstrong, a name etched forever in the chronicles of space conquest, embarked on this perilous odyssey alongside his intrepid fellow astronauts. As the world held its collective breath, Armstrong descended the ladder of the lunar module. The global audience marveled at those pioneering steps, unaware that beneath the surface of this awe-inspiring achievement lay a clandestine enigma, a secret shrouded in mystery for decades. But what exactly was this closely guarded secret? Was it an extraterrestrial encounter? A close brush with the unknown that almost thwarted the mission's return? Join us as we unravel what the first man on the moon really hid for all these years. A secret that could potentially redefine what we thought we knew about our universe. It's a well-known fact that astronauts undergo rigorous training. But the incredible preparations Neil Armstrong underwent before his historic moon landing in 1969 are not as widely recognized. The entire training process spanned three years, during which Armstrong and his colleague Buzz Aldrin faced numerous unique challenges. Among the more intriguing aspects of their training were the walking exercises on tightropes designed to simulate the lower gravity conditions of the moon and the cumbersome spacesuits astronauts would wear. Without this specialized training, Armstrong might have struggled to maintain his balance or even fallen over on the lunar surface. To test the astronauts' nerves and survival instincts in emergency situations, Armstrong, a former naval officer, was exposed to extreme conditions in remote locations like deserts, jungles, and the Arctic. Unlike today's astronauts who undergo similar tests under controlled conditions, Armstrong was simply dropped off at random locations and left to fend for himself for days or weeks. This training was essential to ensure that in the event of a disaster in space or on the moon, an astronaut could rely on their resourcefulness to survive. Armstrong not only excelled in these physical challenges, but also committed himself to learning essential scientific disciplines. Despite his background as a naval officer rather than a scientist, he undertook crash courses in geology and mineralogy, studied gas and lava fields, and received extensive instruction in astronomy and astrophysics. These diverse skills were crucial for a successful moon landing as they enabled him to collect valuable geological samples and contribute to our understanding of lunar geology. The extreme conditions of training didn't stop at Earth's surface. They continued even before the Apollo 11 launch. Two weeks prior to the historic mission, Armstrong had to give up his normal life. He stayed overnight in NASA's sleep lab, where he was meticulously monitored and examined by doctors around the clock. This level of scrutiny was necessary to ensure his health and readiness for the journey to the moon. During the 10-day journey to the moon, the astronaut diet consisted entirely of dried and powdered vegetables mixed with a little water. The reason for this minimal diet was multifaceted. Firstly, there was no way to prepare or handle food in the weightlessness of space, making traditional meals impractical. Secondly, NASA aimed to minimize the astronauts' need to use the restroom, as this could be a complex task in a zero-gravity environment. In his memoirs, Armstrong revealed that his last real meal before the flight was a sumptuous breakfast that included steak, eggs, toast, juice, and coffee. This meal served as a nostalgic reminder of Earth's comforts before venturing into the unknown. Neil Armstrong's secret training was a multifaceted and demanding journey that encompassed physical, mental, and scientific challenges. It prepared him for the historic moment when he would become the first human to set foot on the moon. Armstrong's dedication, adaptability, and courage in the face of extreme conditions are a proof to the remarkable human spirit and determination that made the Apollo 11 mission a triumph for all of humanity. The moon landing, a pivotal moment in human history, is often portrayed as a seamless and meticulously planned event. However, behind the scenes, 
It was a journey filled with unexpected twists and moments of both excitement and boredom. Space travel is commonly imagined as an exhilarating adventure, and it certainly was for the astronauts involved. Yet, amidst the thrill, there were moments of monotony that marked their 109-hour and 42-minute journey to the moon. The vast expanse of space stretched out before them as they covered nearly 239,000 miles, a distance that boggles the mind. As the Apollo 11 spacecraft approached the moon's orbit, an unexpected change in plans occurred. Neil Armstrong was initially scheduled to rest first before making his historic moonwalk. However, the adrenaline coursing through their veins and the sheer excitement of the moment led to a swift alteration. Armstrong and Aldrin simply couldn't find it in themselves to sleep. The Apollo 11 landing capsule, a remarkable feat of engineering, was manually guided to its landing site. In contrast, contemporary space shuttles rely heavily on automated systems for landing and docking maneuvers. This manual control showcased the incredible skill and precision of the astronauts. The actual descent and landing, a mere 1.5-minute affair, were described as remarkably soft and gentle, considering the circumstances. With the eagle, say, excitement was electric. Then came the defining moment. Neil Armstrong, the first human to set foot on the moon. At 2256 Houston time, his boot touched the powdery lunar dust, and history was made. The world watched in awe as Armstrong took those monumental first steps, saying, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It was a phrase that encapsulated the magnitude of the achievement. Armstrong's time on the lunar surface was limited, but he made every second count. He collected rock samples, deployed a lunar seismometer to measure moonquakes, and placed a commemorative plaque, a credo to human achievement. Notably, he planted the U.S. flag into the lunar soil, an act that sparked controversy and conspiracy theories. Critics argued that the flag shouldn't have fluttered since there's no wind on the moon. However, further examination revealed that the flag's movement was caused by the vibrations of the flagpole, not by lunar winds. It was a symbol of human triumph, visible against the stark lunar landscape. Throughout their time on the moon, every move the astronauts made was carefully calculated and executed flawlessly. They returned safely to Earth, having accomplished a feat that seemed impossible just years prior. Neil Armstrong, reflecting on his lunar experience, conveyed the enormity of the moment. He described it as a giant leap for mankind, recognizing that this historic achievement transcended national boundaries and united humanity in a common quest for exploration and discovery. The moon landing of Apollo 11 remains a worthy legacy to human ingenuity, determination, and the indomitable spirit of exploration. Walking on the moon, a feat once deemed the stuff of dreams, turned out to be a surreal experience for Neil Armstrong. As he descended from the lunar module's ladder onto the desolate surface, he couldn't help but marvel at how different it was from his expectations. The longest stretch of lunar terrain Armstrong ventured across equated to the length of a soccer field. This otherworldly stroll led him to a depression now eternally etched in history as East Crater. What makes this moment even more extraordinary is that Armstrong's footprints, his tangible legacy, still linger on the moon's surface today, a tribute to his groundbreaking journey. The moon, unlike Earth, is wrapped in an eerie stillness. There's no breeze to rustle the astronaut's suit or carry away the scent of this alien landscape. Initially, Armstrong couldn't detect any aroma at all. His thick spacesuit was an impenetrable barrier, leaving him in sensory isolation. Had he been able to perceive the lunar atmosphere, it might have been faintly musty or tinged with a sulfurous hint. It was only later, within the confines of the space capsule, that Armstrong's senses awakened to a peculiar scent. Removing his helmet, he realized that remnants of lunar dust on his feet emitted an aroma reminiscent of post-fireworks festivities. The moon had gifted him an olfactory memory to cherish. Amidst the marvels of their lunar adventure, Armstrong and Aldrin faced an unpublicized challenge. Upon re-entering the space capsule with their bulky spacesuits, they inadvertently damaged part of the ignition switch for the ascent engine. However, their resourcefulness and quick thinking prevailed as they ingeniously replaced the damaged part with a simple pin. This uncelebrated act of problem-solving underscored the incredible ingenuity of the astronauts. 
As they prepared to leave the lunar surface, Armstrong couldn't help but reflect on the limitations imposed on their time there. NASA had been understandably concerned about the durability of their spacesuits in the harsh lunar environment. The moon's surface is a land of extremes. On the sunlit side, temperatures soar to a scorching plus 266 degrees Fahrenheit, while in the shadows of dark craters, they plummet to a bone-chilling minus 256 degrees. These temperature fluctuations further emphasized the formidable challenges Armstrong and his fellow astronauts had to overcome. Walking on the moon was not just a historic event. It was a journey of discovery, resilience, and wonder. Neil Armstrong's footsteps, still visible on the lunar surface, serve as a timeless reminder of the audacious spirit of exploration that defines humanity. In the annals of history, few tales are as gripping and suspenseful as the odyssey of Neil Armstrong and his fellow astronauts returning from the moon. These were not just ordinary men, they were pioneers, explorers of the cosmic frontier. But as they touched down on Earth, their journey was far from over, for they were about to embark on a quarantine adventure like no other. Weeks dragged on before Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins could reclaim their slice of normality. In an era where instant gratification was still a dream, patience was their steadfast companion. The world had watched in awe as they danced in the moon's embrace, but the story didn't end with their trial, a precaution born of both curiosity and fear. It's easy to imagine Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins sealed within the confines of a tiny living capsule. They were cocooned from the world outside, their only connection to civilization a lifeline of radio signals. But they were far from lonely. In their self-imposed exile, they were explorers of solitude. Inside their craft, Quarantine Station was a microcosm of life itself. Bunk beds stood side by side, witnesses to dreams of the moon and distant galaxies. A modest place to sit, perhaps, to aid useful contemplation and a toilet, the most mundane of conveniences, became a symbol of resilience, a reminder that even the greatest explorers face everyday necessities. But there was one unexpected marvel in this secluded realm, a small kitchen. Here, in the midst of isolation, Quentin became a symbol of humanity's thirst for knowledge, our unquenchable curiosity, and our indomitable spirit. In a world now grappling with the challenges of isolation, we can find inspiration in Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins' quarantine odyssey. Their willingness to endure solitude for the sake of discovery, their ability to stay connected despite physical barriers, and their unwavering determination in the face of the unknown are lessons we can carry with us. The Quarantine a chapter in history that transcends time and speaks to the heart of human nature reminds us that even in the face of uncertainty, we can find resilience, innovation, and the enduring spirit of exploration. In the aftermath of the historic moon landing in 1969, Neil Armstrong found himself thrust into the spotlight, basking in the wild whirlwind of fame and had been the experience of a lifetime, and he felt content with that singular achievement. However, Armstrong's resolve to avoid the extreme adventures of space did not mean he had lost his appetite for exploration. In 1985, an unexpected twist of fate led him on a new expedition, this time to the North Pole. This endeavor, led by none other than Sir Edmund Hillary, the conqueror of Mount Everest, offered Armstrong a taste of Earth's otherworldly beauty. On April 6, 1985, Armstrong reached the North Pole, marking another remarkable milestone in his adventurous life. In the years following his historic moonwalk, Armstrong largely retreated from the limelight. He was a family man, married twice, and a father of three children. His personal life was marked by a sense of normalcy and a desire for privacy that was often elusive, given his iconic status. His expeditions to remote corners of the Earth were not just about conquest. They were a manifestation of his unwavering love for the planet he had left and returned to. Seen from the perspective of the stars, Armstrong's life after the moon landing was not defined by celebrity or accolades, but by a deep-seated connection to the natural world and a profound appreciation for the extraordinary beauty of our planet. His legacy continues to inspire, reminding us all of the unique and precious nature of our home in the cosmos. On the last phase into the legacies of the first visit to the moon 
we explore an astonishing tale of the legal battle the leader of the Apollo 11 mission was enmeshed. In 2005, the iconic astronaut known for his withdrawn and modest demeanor found himself at the center of a bizarre legal dispute that would intrigue the world for two decades. The man who had ventured to the moon and back, inspiring generations with his historic feat, was embroiled in a peculiar conflict that involved a hairdresser, a collector, and a lock of his own hair. Armstrong had been a loyal customer of the same hairdresser, Mark Sizemore, for years. In the cozy confines of Sizemore's barbershop, Armstrong had shared numerous anecdotes about his life, from his remarkable journey to the moon to the more mundane aspects of his existence. Little did he know that one such seemingly insignificant detail would become the catalyst for a long-running legal saga. The heart of the dispute lay in the revelation that Sizemore had sold a lock of Armstrong's hair to a collector for a staggering sum of $3,000. This lock of hair, deemed a genuine relic of the astronaut, had become the prized possession of a private moon enthusiast. As the news of this bizarre transaction spread, legal proceedings ensued, placing Sizemore in a dilemma. The court presented Sizemore with a choice, return the hair to its rightful owner or donate the proceeds to a charity of Armstrong's choosing. In a surprising turn of events, Sizemore chose the latter option, opting to make the charitable contribution. This unique incident found its place in Armstrong's latest autobiography, shedding light on a lesser-known facet of his life. While Armstrong had co-authored several books about the moon landing, most of them focused on the technical aspects and historical significance of the mission. They revealed the dedicated astronaut, but not the inner workings of his personality. However, there was one secret that even his closest relatives and his autobiographer were unaware of during his lifetime. It was only after Armstrong's passing in 2012 that his widow, Carol, stumbled upon a box of enigmatic items that had remained hidden from the world. Inside this unassuming box were small technical components from the Apollo 11 lunar landing capsule, remnants of a historic journey to the moon. Among these artifacts, there was also an original camera used during the mission. The discovery left the world astounded. Collectors and enthusiasts would have eagerly paid millions for these invaluable souvenirs. Yet Armstrong had chosen to keep their existence a secret throughout his life. The question of why he concealed these treasures, perhaps even from those closest to him, remains an enduring mystery that adds another layer to the fascinating personality of the moonwalking legend. Armstrong's life was one filled with excitement and adventure. From his early days as a solid Navy Marine, to his historic moment on the lunar surface, he had always been a man of courage and humility. In the end, Neil Armstrong passed away at the age of 82, his health deteriorating from heart problems stemming from bypass surgery. As his legacy as a pioneering astronaut and a symbol of human achievement endures, the discovery of hidden treasures after his death adds a captivating twist to the story of the moon landing. It reminds us that even those who have reached the stars may carry secrets that only time can unveil, continuing to captivate our imaginations long after they are gone. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.